Well, as if I need another handy cam like I do a hole in the head, I came across this uh, model that I've actually been on a lookout for for over a year. It's a Sony DCR-TRV330. It is a very well equipped digital 8 model camcorder that can play back analog video 8 and high 8 tapes and stream it over its firewire jack and it also has the much desirable analog pass-through capabilities. And I could not pass this thing up when I saw it selling for a grand total $5.79. That's pretty cheap for a camcorder with this amount of features and considering how much they go for on eBay I wasn't going to give it too much thought. I mean if it's broken or the tape mechanism doesn't work I could still use it uh, use its analog pass-through capabilities and use it, of, use it as a very high quality video card. Also got this, a pair of uh, headphones for British Airways that actually sound decent. It's pretty surprising to have a pair of airline headphones that actually sounds good. I mean they're not they're not anything close to Bose quality or anything like that but they're pretty good. I got the uh, Sony model RMT-811 uh, wireless remote control and it does have battery. I was actually unable to test this thing's performance and whether it actually worked or not at the thrift store. There wasn't a tape in the uh, the, the tape mechanism. But I bought it because uh, even if the camera was a dud and was completely DOA, it did come with this, a Sony Infolithium M SQ high capacity battery with a very neat battery meter and I checked it in the store, it had two bars so it leads me to believe that the battery still holds a decent charge and isn't completely broken and worn out. This is model NP-QM1D. These go for around 20 to $30 on eBay so you know, even if it's the camera's a complete write-off and the, the battery's the only thing worth saving. This does have night shot as well as super night shot, which is pretty much it just lowers the shutter speed exponentially to a point where any motion turns into just smeary, blurry lines and, and blobs. But it's good if you have it on a tripod and night shot just isn't doing it. It'll lower, lowering the shutter speed will definitely help increase the brightness of the picture. This has super laser link, and your tape transport controls are located up here. I've seen many of these model handicams that have this entire membrane button just completely worn out where the buttons no longer work and the people say you have to use an external remote control because the people just poked them and prodded them for years on end and they just decided to give up after all the strain. This has 700x digital zoom which is completely useless and pointless but it does have 20x optical zoom and auto and manual focus with an actual focus ring which is something that you really are hard pressed to find uh, on any modern camcorder that's under a thousand dollars. They just they don't come with that unless you of course buy a DSLR. You have your fader and backlight controls, your volume, and one nice thing about this camcorder is its swing out display size is appropriately matched to that of the LCD screen. A lot of handycams have this gigantic plastic swing out display but only about two inches of it are actually used for the LCD screen so it's nice to have a small little swing out display. And then we have our controls here. Edit, search, play, index, a bunch of controls for the memory stick card which this actually did come with. It's a four megabyte card and yes I did check it. There's nothing stored on it from the previous owners but it's Nice to have it regardless just to take a few photos with. You have your exposure control as well as your selection diopter control which is incredibly finicky. I've tried to uh, clean it with some contact cleaner but whenever I try to push in to engage a menu option or feature it brings up the titler for some reason. So looks like I'm going to have to give it a bit more, uh, a few more shots of contact cleaner and then hopefully it'll decide to cooperate. And this is just a black and white viewfinder, but it does slide out and it does rotate up and down and it has a focus control located underneath. You have your DC input, you have your record button, and your function slash power switch. There are three different functions that are accessible via this switch. There's VCR, memory, and camera. Of course, that's not counting the off position, which doubles as charging. And one thing I noticed that was a minor annoyance until I figured this little workaround out. When I go to turn this on to put it to record to tape, I put it all the way up. And previously when I was doing that, it was asking whether I it was defaulting to going into the memory mode and taking pictures to the memory stick. 
but if I want to disable that so it just defaults to the tape mode you pull out this little locking tab here and then when you go to turn this on it stops it prevents it from going into the memory mode and instead defaults to camera mode you have your photo button and your zoom control and the tape drum is actually located right beneath this plastic trim piece so the tape actually loads from the underside of this camera and not from the top like older Handycam models did and this does have an intelligent accessory shoe if you just have a regular cold shoe mounted microphone or anything like that you can just use its three and a half millimeter stereo microphone jack and a stereo headphone output to monitor your audio and here is the front of the camera there's your stereo microphone, a very high quality stereo microphone at that. Your record indicator light, and if we engage night shot on this handy cam, we'll be able to see beneath this smoked black plastic and see not only the infrared emitter and the super laser link emitter, but we'll also be able to see the remote sensor, which is on the bottom of that piece of black plastic. So when we use our remote control, it'll send it wirelessly. You could also fold the LCD screen in like that for easy viewing. Now beneath these flaps there's actually a few different I.O. ports. There's an S-Video output, an audio video output and input, again because this model has analog pass-through. And then beneath this door here, there's not only a USB jack for USB video streaming, but you have your 4-pin Firewire connection and an LANC jack for an external remote control. Okay, let's go ahead and try to test this camera and keep our fingers crossed that it actually works or at least powers on. Let's see. Now it's complaining it wants its clock set. Probably because it has been without power for a very long time. But that's a bit weird because the battery it came with had a charge. I mean, it has a charge, so it should have kept time unless the previous owners never bothered to set it when they connected the battery up. What is that symbol? Okay, that means that we're in manual focus. There we go. Now we're in auto. And it's telling us to insert a tape. Let's go ahead and do that. Well, for this demonstration, I have only an 8mm video cassette, but that shouldn't be a problem because Digital 8 camcorders can record a Digital 8 video signal to just a regular 8mm tape. It doesn't have to be a high 8 tape. I don't see anything obviously wrong with the uh, tape mechanism. Let's insert this like so and hope that everything works. Oh, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound promising. All right, let's see. Let's see if this records now. Let me set situate these uh Let's and let's try recording now. Oh, it looks like there's some previously recorded content on here. That may be the subject of some lost tapes videos in the future. Okay, we're recording now. It's not flashing an error on the screen, so it must be doing something right. And that weird noise is gone, whatever it was making. Let's see, zoom works. Let's see if manual focus works as well. If I could find a stupid switch for it. Yep, it does work. That's quite nice having an actual focus ring. Now if we go through the menu, there's a couple features in here, but it's pretty much the same exact menu that all the other Sony Handycams from this era share. You have controls for digital zoom, steady shot, night shot light, auto TV on, TV input, letter size and language, record lamp, option for commander, which is Sony's way of turning on or off the remote control functionality. And then your indicator, which by default for some reason it's always turned off on these handy cams with this ability. Let me see if this will do this. Now it's not going to bring up the title like it was doing before. That was a bit bizarre. But now I turn that on. And now this little LCD screen lights up a nice dark blue. A bit strange how it's not turned on by default. I guess it's to save battery. Alright, let's exit out of here. Oh, it just did it. It brought up the titler again, so it is going to need a bit of uh, uh, cleaning. And apparently I never st bothered to stop recording before going through that entire menu. Let's see what it does in VCR mode. Let's rewind this just a bit. Put on display. Alright, let's rewind this just a little and hopefully it will play. And we'll 
Okay, play. Laser links on for some reason. TV input. Letter size and language. Record lamp commander, which is just a fancy way of saying. Okay, so apparently it can play back tapes fine. It's just weird that there was that tape noise. Ooh. Okay, that does not sound promising. I'm gonna have to take a look into what's causing that noise. Well, all is not lost, fortunately. Turns out that this is a worn out and tired mechanism, at least the tape loading part of this mechanism is. So when you insert the tape and close this up, you'll see that what's actually making that noise is a little protective flap, which actually sounds horrendous right now. Now that I've flipped the camera around, it's a bit easier to show you what it is I'm talking about. You can see that that protective flap that goes over the tape when not in use, when it's not loaded into a tape mechanism, is actually not being retracted and pulled back fully. The mechanism, something that does that is, I guess, being a little, is a little worn out. So it's actually rubbing against the side of the tape drum, not the part that actually makes contact with the tape and records the audio and video, thankfully. It's just touching the side, which doesn't do anything. But it only makes that sound if you turn this camera completely sideways or upside down. When you have it the right side up, it's completely silent and works perfectly. For five cents and some change, I really can't complain, especially considering that this is a very desirable model Handycam and works perfectly, providing, of course, that you keep it in an upright position. This is a test of the Sony TCR TRV 330 digital weight handycam. Just doing some driving here and seeing how it performs with uh, a decent amount of motion. Of course, there's not going to be any steady shot because I'm recording this in 16 by 9 wide mode. There's a gas station. Gas prices are going back up. Hit an all time low of 175 about a month and a half ago. And now they're going right back up to where they were. You can see the camera does very well. The stereo audio is uh, pretty good. I was monitoring the audio with headphones uh, in the clip before. And I could definitely tell that uh, I, I'm on the left side of the camera because of the stereo separation. One nice thing about these, uh, these handy cams is because they're a proper camcorder, they don't over-modulate the audio whenever you're driving in a car, you can actually hear the audio. A lot of cheap pocket-sized camcorders these days, they over-modulate and overdrive the microphone, and it leads to a distorted mess whenever you try to record video in a car. Oh, I forgot to close this junk draw earlier. And for anyone wondering, the musical background, the musical interlude in the background you may have heard throughout my video, was courtesy of V West Life Live, his live show, which is taking place Wednesday the 15th of April 2015. Always nice to have commercial free music that actually is good. And my cassette tape I was using to record the show I guess ran out. Looks like I have to replace that. Here is just a regular Western Electric 500 clone. I believe this is made by ITT. But the bell gong ringer in this thing sounds incredibly good. version of a song and they're both from the same recording session so with a little editing you can come up with something that sounds like this I'm sure everyone's thoroughly sick and tired of seeing my thinkpad here but one last little update on it I finally got this a genuine 65 watt Lenovo power adapter which has a properly has a proper strain relief here and it does work so I think it's pretty safe to say that a fake knockoff power adapters can cause issues with random lockups and problems with your computer so it's better just to spend a few more dollars and save yourself the trouble and here's that MacBook again I did a video on not too long ago well I guess I spoke too soon regarding that battery because I got it and it uh, began to uh, exhibit erratic behavior. I began to smell a very strange smell that was coming from the battery itself that smelled 
akin to an exploded or leaking battery so I didn't want to take any chances and I just tossed that thing out in the recycling bin and I'm gonna go ahead and buy a new one pretty soon. Anyone want some thin pretzels? I do.